Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Church Dogmatics by Emil Brunner, first published in German in 1946. We're going to take a look at uh, the first half of Chapter 10. It's a 40-page chapter, so we're going to split it in two parts. We're going to look at 239 to 249. Actually, it's going to be 239 to 250, and uh, it's on the it's on the faith, the Christian faith. And we'll begin with uh, block one. We'll look at it in three moments, pages 239 to 250. So let's go to block one: faith, truth, and confession. Faith in Christ is the Christian faith. And theology explicates faith in Christ. All doctrine is abbreviated under this one faith. All doctrine. Truth in Christ, which he says is Christology. It is the source of light. Christ is the historical revelation. Christ is the center of history determined from all eternity, leading to our confession of Christ. So now we look at confession in Christ. Liberalism never addresses Christology. Remember, neo-orthodoxy stands against liberalism, but scripture testifies to Jesus as the Christ, as the basis of our faith. Therefore, within the discussion of faith, truth, and confession, our answer must always be entirely, wholly in Christ, of a very special reality and a very particular way of understanding, a spiritual way of understanding. And that is what, as conservative German evangelicals, that is what Brunner stands for, Barth and Brunner. Bart and Brunner and Bonhoeffer, all three. Let's go to block two. And remember, it is dialectical theology. And so in block two, which is always your heartbeat of the lesson, Brunner wants to talk about the dialectic between the Jesus of history and the uh, Christ of faith. And this is a big topic, especially today, when you have uh, scholars like uh, Bart Ehrman, from uh, North Carolina at Chapel Hill arguing against Christ because he bases everything on the historical content and none of the faith content. When you have someone like that that has a very prominent place in our scholarly culture today, this becomes an important issue. So Block two, the historical Jesus. The historical Jesus is relevant for our faith. We have records of his life, his teaching, and his death. There is a reliable core of historical truth. In incarnation itself means the historical existence of Jesus. The life of Jesus is able to, to withstand all historical criticism. The apostolic witness to the Christ. This is the Christ of faith. The synoptic gospels are to be preferred over that of John's gospel. And that's true, even though personally I prefer John's gospel. It is a theological gospel, and I prefer, uh, I love John's gospel. I truly do. But it's a very theological gospel, written by a very mature apostle John toward the end of his life when uh, he could look back and reflect in a very theological way. So uh, I do believe that the Apostle John is the author of John's Gospel. I do not question that. But I, I, I do love it. It's a very theological, thoughtful Gospel. But uh, Brunner's right. From a historical point of view, the synoptic Gospels are to be preferred. We affirm the synoptic tradition. The acts of Jesus were of messianic consciousness, and Jesus' messianic self-testimony revealed him as the Christ. 
So Brunner concludes apostolic testimony and the historical core are both important and very significant for our Christology, for what we believe about Jesus as the Christ. But we don't ignore either one. Instead, we keep them in dialectical tension. As the title says in Block 2, we practice dialectical theology between Jesus of history and Christ of faith. That's what I love about the neo-Orthodox position. You don't exclude either position. You keep them in dialectical conversation with each other. Just like we always keep cross and resurrection in dialectical conversation with each other. So we affirm a dialectic between Jesus of history and Christ of faith. We affirm and we keep that dialectical conversation going in our mind and in our heart. Now block three, this dialectic becomes resolved as Jesus as the Christ. It can only be resolved as Jesus as the Christ. Apostolic doctrine does contain differences, but never contains a contradiction. Christ was entrusted to be the Christ, not to proclaim the Christ. In Christ, this is key, the prophetic promises were fulfilled. Remember the previous lesson, how important the proclamation of the prophets was with the synagogues being scattered throughout the Roman Empire. Prophecy was being proclaimed in the synagogues. That helped prepare the way for Paul's preaching. Synagogues, the Jews were scattered. Synagogues were everywhere in the Roman Empire. And in those synagogues, Gentiles could attend. And prophecy was being proclaimed. Isaiah, the prophet, was being proclaimed. Jeremiah, the prophet, was being proclaimed. Prophecy was being proclaimed. Very significant. It prepared the way for Paul and the proclamation of the gospel. That was last lesson. But it's important. Christ was entrusted to be the Christ, not to proclaim the Christ. The prophetic promises were fulfilled in Christ. Fulfillment of promise in the gospels. And now he goes to Matthew 12, 17 and 18. Spoken by Isaiah. Behold my servant in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show justice to the Gentiles. He shall show dekayasune, righteousness, to the Gentiles. Dekayasune, righteousness, to the Gentiles. Mark 12:10. Have you not read, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? And then Matthew 11:27. All things are delivered unto me by my Father. All things. All things by my Father. So we end up with 3.3, uh, three, three, the apostolic declaration, Jesus as the Christ. The disciples speak directly about Jesus as the Christ, understanding the cross through the resurrection. There you go. Understanding the cross through the resurrection. Understanding cross and resurrection always in dialectical relationship. Then we finish with Luke 24, 25, and 26. The prophets have spoken, out not Christ to have suffered these things, to enter into his glory. There you go. There is a verse supporting the dialectic between cross and resurrection. Luke 24, verses 25 and 26. Have not the prophets spoken, out not Christ to have suffered these things, in order to enter into his glory. Let's do a very quick recap, and we'll wrap up here with the first half of uh, chapter 10. And in block 1, it's all about faith in Christ, truth in Christ, and we finish with confession in Christ. So let's go to look at 3. Liberalism never addresses Christology, and Neo-Orthodox theology by Bart was a, the father of Neo-Orthodoxy. It was a protest against liberalism and a protest against the Nazi regime in Bart's day. But it was a protest against liberalism. 
Liberalism never addresses Christology. But scripture testifies to Jesus as the Christ, as the basis of our faith. We must always answer entirely in Christ of a special reality and of a very particular way of understanding, a very particular spiritual way of understanding. We enter a new dimension of life, a new, remember the previous lesson, a new way of being in Christ, a new way of being in Christ. No longer works righteousness, a new way of being in Christ. That is what we affirm. Now, block two. Note two, the apostolic witness to the Christ. The synoptic gospels are to be preferred. They are in a closer relationship to the historical over that of John's gospel. Even though personally, I truly love John's gospel. I love the theological gospel. It's very important to me. We do affirm the synoptic tradition, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The acts of Jesus were of a messianic consciousness, and Jesus' own messianic self-testimony revealed him as the Christ. Apostolic testimony and the historical core are both very significant and important for our Christology, for our proclamation of the gospel. And for Brunner, you go to the Synoptic Gospels. They are the best example of that dialogue between Jesus of history and Christ of faith. Gospel of John is more of a theological gospel written toward the end of the Apostle John's life when he's had time to develop his own learning in a very deep theological way. Now, it was probably written by a scribe dictated by John the Apostle, but uh, it reflects someone at the end of their life with deep theological insight. And uh, I truly affirm that John is the author of the Gospel of John. I truly believe that. I truly affirm that. And then in block three, we're going to go to two because it has important scripture. Matthew 12, 17 and 18, spoken by Isaiah. Behold my servant in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show the Kayusuni righteousness to the Gentiles. Mark 12:10. Have you not read the stone which the builders rejected? has become the head of the corner. Christ is the kafali, head of the body. Matthew 11:27, All things are delivered unto me by my Father. And just to close out with Scripture, we'll look at uh, Luke 24, 25 and 26 at the bottom of 3 there. The prophets have spoken, Out not Christ to have suffered these things in order to enter into his glory. The cross and the resurrection remain in dialectical relationship to each other forever for the believer. When we gather at the cross, we gather through our understanding of resurrection. We see the cross through resurrection. When we gather at the resurrection, we gather through the filter and understanding of the cross. We always see cross and resurrection together. The Christ who was crucified is the Christ who was resurrected. The Christ who was abandoned in darkness is the Christ who was raised up in resurrection and exalted to the right hand of the Father. The Christ who was abandoned is the Christ who was resurrected so that for all those who are in Christ, they shall never be abandoned by God. That has been overcome by the triune Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That gives us a very good first half. That's chapter 10a. Next lesson will be 10b. It'll be 250 to 260. This lesson actually went to 250. So next lesson, 250 to 260, and it will conclude... Chapter 10.
next lesson. But that wraps up 239 to 250 on 10A.